In this video, we're going to look at conditional probability. Conditional probability is when the probability of the second event is reliant on the first event happening. The phrase, given that, implies conditional probability. So this means here we've got the probability of A given B, and it means the probability of A given B, that B has already happened, or that B has happened, uh, or given that B has happened, it is the probability of A happening. So your formula is probability of A given B is equal to the probability of A and B divided by the probability of B. I'm going to pause the video and I'm going to go back to a previous example we did in a previous video just to explain a couple of different uh, probabilities. Right, this was an example we did on our tree diagrams video. And this example said the prob probability it rains at Belfast is 0.65. If it rains, the probability of Phil exercising is 0.3. So I've got this one highlighted here. So this is 0.3. So this is a probability that Phil exercises given that it rains. That's really what this, this probability represents. So I'm just going to uh, state what that is. So that, that wee bit in here really is, that really is, if I can get the pen working here, um, that is just equal to the probability of him exercising given that it has rained. Likewise, down here, this one circled in green. Uh, so what's happened here, it has not rained, and then he's exercised, uh, exercised so that's the probability he exercises, given that it has not rained. Okay, so you can see two different things. So depending on if it's raining or not, Phil is more or less likely uh, to exercise. Okay, and this example says the probability that John plays chess is 7 over 12. The probability he plays squash is 4 over 9. The prob probability he plays both is 3 over 10. Find the probability he plays squash given that he plays chess and chess given that he plays squash. So I'm just going to write out what we have got. So we've, the information we've got, we've got probability he plays chess is 7 over 12. The probability he plays squash is 4 over 9. And the probability he plays both, so that's chess intersect squash or chess and squash is uh, 3 over 10. Find the probability and part 1 we want to find the probability he plays squash given that he plays chess. So remember the formula, I'm just going to write the formula over here it was probability of A given B is equal to the probability of A intersect B divided by the probability of B. Now, this was a, a formula I used to find quite hard to remember, uh, but if you look at it here, it looks like you've got, I know it isn't, it's, it's not really A being divided by B, but it looks a bit like A forward slash B looks a bit like your B is dividing. And look what's on the bottom line. It is your uh, probability of B. So B in some way is dividing here. So that's a good way uh, to remember it. So over here, uh, it looks a bit like your C is dividing the S. So I'm going to put probability C in the bottom line, and then probability S intersect C goes on the top line. And then it's just a matter of filling in. So that really is 3 over 10, and then it was being divided by the probability of C, which was 7 over 12. Just do that on your calculator, and you will get 18 over 35. For part 2, we want to find probability he plays... Uh, a chess if he plays squash, so this is probably he plays chess given he plays squash, which again is going to be C intersect S uh, divided by our probability of playing squash. So in this case, that's going to be 3 over 10 divided by the probability play squash, which is 4 over 9. And if you do that on your calculator, you will get 27 over 40. And there's our first example done. Next example. Next example says there are 28 people in 12S, 20 study geography, 18 study Spanish, and 5 study neither. Find the probability that pupils selected at random studies geography given they study Spanish. And then part 2, if they study geography, what is the probability they study Spanish? Okay, let's just write down the probabilities we have first of all. So we've got, um, we have got that your probability of studying geography is 20 out of 28 
the probability, let's just make it a little bit narrower or less, the probability that we study Spanish is 18 out of 28, and the probability, and how we say this, is neither geography nor Spanish. So that is going to be 5 out of 28. So we could use a Venn diagram to do this one. It might uh, be quite useful. So if we have a Venn diagram, you've got your geography, you've got your Spanish, and we're not going to use the Venn diagram for very much here, but just to add in that you've got 5 over 28 is a bit outside. So that shows you then that the bit inside, which would be geogra geography, union, Spanish, or, or you could say geography or Spanish, is equal to 1 minus 5 over 28, which works out to be 23 over 28. Once you've done that, you're ready, you're ready to go uh, with this question. So what we need to find is the wee overlap in the middle. So we're going to use this form. Uh, so this wee bit in here, that's what we need to find. So if we uh, say, so let's get rid of those. Okay, so if we want to find our probability of G intersect Spanish, that's what we're looking for. So how we're going to do that is use the formula probability of G union Spanish is equal to probability of G plus probability of S minus your intersect, which is G and S. So then fill in what you know and rearrange. So that's 23 over 28. And then your probability of G is 20 over 28. Spanish is 18 over 28 minus your probability of G intersect s. So your probability of g intersect s is equal to, uh, and that's going to be 20 over 28 plus 18 over 28 minus 23 over 28. Okay, so that's your probability of geography and Spanish works out to be, uh, and it's worked out, I've done that in my calculator to get 15 over 28. Okay, only now are we ready to start this question, really. So, part one, what we wanted to find was probability Spanish. Uh, it says, find a probability that pupil selected random studies geography, given they study Spanish. Uh, I've done that wrong way around then. So, it's geography, given Spanish. So, it's a probability of geography and Spanish, which we've just worked out, divided by your probability of Spanish, which works out to be uh, 15 over 28. Divided by your probability of Spanish, probability of Spanish of lost it is 18 over 28. And if you do that on your calculator, you will get uh, 5 over 6. And if we scroll down a wee bit, just about squeeze this one on here. Part 2, we're going to find the other one we're asked to find. Probability that they study uh, they study if they study geography, what is the probability they study Spanish? So, it says if they study geography, so the geography is a given bit, what is the probability they study Spanish? So it's probability of your Spanish and your geography, and divided by your probability of geography. And again, that's going to be equal to your probability of Spanish and geography was 15 over 28. And on that, folks, Spanish, probability of Spanish and geography is exactly the same as prob probability of geography and Spanish. Uh, so it doesn't matter which way around you write it. Okay, so we had 15 over 28 divided by, and our probability of geography was 20 over 28. And if you do that, what you're going to get is 3 quarters. Our last example for this video and for our probability section of GCSE further mass, it says if probability of A given B is equal to 0.274, probability A is equal to 0.43 and probability B is equal to 0.62. Find the probability of A and B. Okay, we're going to write down our formula, which was the formula for A given B. So it is equal to the probability of A and B divided by the probability of B. So we can fill in what you know as you're told in the question. Probability of A given B is 0.274. 
the probability of A and B is what we're trying to find, probability of A and B, and your probability of B is 0.62. So 0.274 times 0.62 is equal to the probability of A and B, and then your probability of A and B is equal to, and it is 0.169. Eight, eight. So to three uh, significant figures, as quite often is asked at GCSE further maths, that would be 0 0.170 to three sig figs. Okay, part two. Once you've got your probability of A and B, it's that easy for you to find probability of B given A, which because it's just going to be probability of B intersect A, which you've just worked out, divided by your probability of A. And you've got both of those things, so that's just going to be 0 0.16988. Uh, so notice I've used the, the version that goes to five decimal places, five sig figs instead of the three sig figs. And then I'm dividing by my, by my A, which is 0 0.43. And if you do that on your calculator, you will get uh, 0.395, and that's the three sig figs. Okay, part three asks you to find the probability of neither A nor B. So uh, if we just do a wee Venn diagram to help explain what we are looking for. So if you do a Venn diagram just to help explain what we're looking for here. There's your rectangle for your Venn diagram. There's your A. There's your B. And this is a bit that we're looking for outside here. So this is a bit. Uh, whoop, that means... Neither, uh, as neither A nor B. Okay, so uh, what we're looking for, that's going to be equal to, as well, that's our probability, sorry, of neither A nor B, which is going to be equal to 1 minus your probability of A union B. So A union B is this overlapping circles bit. So we're taking that away. So it's going to be 1 minus uh, A union B. So we'll come back to that. We'll just find out what our A union, uh, A union B is. Okay. In fact, we'll put that in this line. If we do, if we do the job, we'll put it in a, in, a, in a square bracket. We'll say our probability of A union B is probability of A plus our probability of B minus our intersection. We have got all of those things. Apologies for squeezing this in. And then that's going to be 1 minus. And if you just put those things in, uh, A was... Uh, was point, point 0.43, your B was point 0.62, and your A and B, again I've used point 0.16988, so use the more detailed version of it, uh, so that works out as 1 minus point 0.88012, uh, which works out to be point one two zero to three significant figures. Okay, just a quick summary of what we've got then. So two of the most important formulas you're going to have is probability of A union B is equal to probability of A plus the probability of B minus your intersection. And then the other one, your conditional formula probability, is A given B is equal to the probability of A and B divided by the probability of B. Okay, and if two things are mutually exclusive, so they can't happen at the same time, then that's why probability of A or B is equal to just probability of A plus the probability of B. That's if A and B are mutually exclusive. Let me spell mutually exclusive. Okay, so let's just have a wee think why that is. Because A or B, if, they, if A and B are mutually exclusive, they can't happen at the same time, so this bit of it would be equal to zero. So that's why it disappears. So there's three important formulas for you. Uh, for your uh, 
for your probability.